You want to know something about need a tool, make a tool, it doesn't work. You keep working at it, keep working at it, and you finally get it to work, and then you realize it isn't what you needed in the first place. Happy Monday. So I was uh, back to the, the pans, right? So the ring of fire thing. Um, I, it's, I'll let it cool down. I'll show you what I did. But I made some modifications, and the thing works great. Actually, let me, let me show you now. If we take a look at it, I just got done working that eighth inch, um, 11, that 11 gauge um, pan and ring of fire everything's working fine um, after my modifications though the inside part of this is getting red hot so it'll probably melt but anyway here's the point so it works great at, at only putting heat around the outside the problem is when I throw a pan in there like this one it doesn't get down into the heat all right so it sits there on top and just kind of I don't know what you call it it doesn't get down to where the heat is so, in the end, as much as this finally worked, right, and it's because I changed the way the air, the airflow was, uh, it's not going to do what I want. Uh, it's too much of a hassle. I can't get down into the coals to get that edge buried in there and, and uh, heat it up. So, well, there it is working anyway. I'll go back to the, uh, what the modifications that I made. But here's that, oh, it's still a little warm, eighth inch pan that I did that, uh, uh, the, the whole the whole process started with when I when I made the clamp out of the 11 11 gauge or eighth inch um, thick steel uh, this was a fluted thing when you saw it last this is right off the anvil or just finished hammering I haven't even tried to clean it up uh, using the jig and everything I mean every, it looks great the sides are almost perfect um, most of the the hammer marks are on the outside of the rim which is good there is some marking on the inside from my my jig which I need to clean that up a little bit but you know once I grind this thing down or clean it up I think it's gonna be a great looking pan Ow, it's hot the hell. and it, uh, it proof of concept um, that the entire process works this thing was phenomenal uh, definitely key there may be more that I can do with it to help make it more but not, at this point I'm, I'm okay with it uh, that's a beautiful start to a pan. Once she gets cleaned up, I think it's going to be an awesome pan and, and a quality pan. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's a nice heavy duty steel, carbon steel pan. All right, but back to the original problem. Um, ring of fire is what I thought I wanted. Concept was great, and then in the end, all I need is my bucket forge. The reason I moved away from the bucket forge, if you go back and watch some of the, the videos, um, was because it was a brake drum this big, or you know, it's bigger, but I can't show you, all right? And when I was cooking it, the entire thing was hot, all right? Which is really all that I need. I don't really need just the ring. It doesn't matter if I get the inside hot because the only time I'm actually working it is, uh, is in the jig. And then when you're done with the jig and you have all those flutes, now you're only heating a little bit at a time. You're not going to take all those foods off at once. And for some of you guys, you think you can just push this down into something uh, with the right hydraulic press, perhaps, all right, but by stretching the sides or something like that. But to forge it, you don't do that. You, when you push this down in, it's going to flute just like it is it did when I hammered it. Try it. All right? Try it with something thin. All right, cut a circle and see see what you can do about um, rolling up the sides without it without it fluting. So anyway, the point of the matter is, is that those flutes, I actually have to work those one at a time. Two times around is all it took. And this pan was right here. All right, very, very cool. The rest of the work was done relatively cold and I still have some cleanup that I can do on it. But the point is, is to do that, I need to set the thing into the fire like this anyway. All right, so what I need and what I'm gonna do now is what I really need was the bucket forge. I need to be able to heat a wide, wide area. And then I also need to be able to, to dig into the coals here all right, when I need to, whether I set the thing in like this or I set the thing in uh, on edge. All right? I just need a bigger heating area, which the ring of fire, there it is over there. Concept is going to work. I'm just going to take that inside out so that the whole thing's hot. Let me kind of just go over what I did in case you ever do need to make a ring of fire and have it work. Um, a lot of suggestions were given on the videos. I kind of took an amalgam of a lot of those and some other ideas I had. We changed the, uh, the holes in the bottom to slots. All right, I like that, that idea. Much more airflow. I think airflow was the problem. Uh, I, I did have holes in the side, 
Some of you guys didn't notice that I put those in. You thought I only did the bottom, but I had holes in the side. Um, I then took and cut the top ring off this rim and welded it on the bottom. So now I have this whole air catching and elevating thing that lifts it off the, the, um, the forge a little bit so, I, so that these slots weren't inside the, the, the forge pot, it was above it, so the air was, was it more free, the air could move more freely. And then as you can see, I closed off, I welded a, a plate on the bottom here, I closed off the entire side venting concept of this. So it was just bottom air feed with this thing in the middle, which I figured would melt off anyway, because there's that, now there's just an air pocket there, there's no air getting to it. Um, and that was it. Those modifications, anthracite coal, and uh, it's, you know, it's a pain in the ass to start. You got to start charcoal all the way around. It takes a little, little bit more than normal. But um, this thing in the middle is the problem for what I'm, what I'm really needing. If I, I, I was talking and I forgot where the hell I was, I was saying. So in, after using it now, um, because when I throw a pan in here, I can't get it down into the coals so that the sides are actually touching coals. And I can't just scoop up a bunch of coals, drop the pan, and pour it around because of this damn thing in the center. Um, the concept was I didn't need to heat the center, but in reality what I needed was a wider area of heat. And that's what this does. It takes me right back to my bucket forge where I was heating more area than just that little spot inside my forge. So what I'm going to do right now, and is, since I welded this, and that's nice and semi, you know, pretty, pretty airtight, I'm going to try to maintain that plate. I'm just going to cut around the inside, remove this, the hub part of this, um, this uh, wheel off and then I'll go ahead and maintain these slot patterns on the inside and that'll give me basically just an expander for my forge, right? To give me more heated area outside of the forge. I'll tell you, I'm not gonna win any prize for quality at the New York State Fair, that's for sure. So I cut that in and out. out. All right, to get rid of that obstruction, now I can just dip the pan in if I need to. Plus, I can scoop up it. You know, when I let's say I'm putting this pan in like this, and I want to uh, let's get you down so you can see what you're doing, and I and I want to just heat the rim as much as possible. I can make myself a little scoop, scoop up a whole handful of hot coal, and just around the outside of the rim after I put it in, and that'll make a significant difference to what I was getting uh, before. So, again, until you know, you don't know. You don't know for sure. Same basic idea, just doesn't have that that hump inside there. Hopefully, yeah, I'm sure I'll have enough air to keep everything going. Hopefully, the center will still be a little cooler because I again I don't, especially when I'm well when I'm working the, the when I'm working the the flutes around the outside. I'm only heating the edge anyway. I don't want to get any heat up in here because I could distort. Look how nice and round that is, huh? All right. That's the, that was the key. That was the primary focus was to make sure I get to this point with a perfectly round and not one single hammer stroke on the inside of this plate or yeah this pan. So uh, that was my objective and that's where we're at right now. So um, one other thing somebody suggested was to uh, to cover it, which I'm not sure how well that's going to work, but I happen to have this this cover. I I ran out of sandblasting media so. Uh, either we're going to stink up the shop here a little bit or I'll try wire brushing that a little. But uh, for when I'm trying to heat the entire disc or the entire pan, throw that on. That'll help contain the heat. I mean, it's not insulated or anything, but it'll certainly help the process along, that's for sure. So there's the new, uh, new improved version. And uh, we'll go ahead and I'll cut up another disc and see. Sad news. Sad news is my good freaking plasma cutter that I bought in March eBay won't tell you where it was made died was working using it all morning flipping with the flip it on and the light went gone so now I'm back to the scratch start or whatever you want to call it and I don't know how well it's gonna cut that eighth inch stuff it's so sad because I ain't got the money to buy I don't have the money to buy another cheap one let alone buy a good one sucks man sucks to be so freaking poor especially when you gotta make a living off of this stuff so of course having kids doesn't help mm -mm, not at all because if I didn't have to try to save up to buy my daughter her first vehicle 
which we're doing trying right now. Then I'd have money to go buy a decent plasma cutter. Daughter, plasma cutter. Hmm. Alrighty, guys, I cut another 12 inch disc uh, out of the 11 gauge. Let's see um, how long it takes me um, to to get to the point where I am with the other pan, which is pretty damn close to finish. A little fine tuning on the hammering and some grinding and, and then the handle. I would love to think that it's possible to do that in an hour. We're going to give it a go. We have to get that forge started first, though. Not having started this one with this new configuration, I'm not sure exactly the best way to do it. Originally, I would fill the outer ring with charcoal. So I think we'll just pretend there's an outer ring there. Put some charcoal in it. We'll light that up. Around the outside. Put the fan on. a little bit and we'll throw some coal on and get her going I hope I hope I think that's just wanted to get it so that I knew it was going to take before I start putting the coal on and again this isn't something I'm going to like or like to do one pan at a time no no way this is going to be on pan day so definitely definitely more work than, than normal but I think she'll come up, we'll give her a few minutes to cook, and then we'll get started. I've been uh, working on this thing, and I keep forgetting to weld that uh, valve stem hole up. Never done. Look more like a cooking show with Chandler than a freaking pan making exercise, but I put some, uh, I cut some slots in that lid so it would vent for me. You can see that it's doing that. Put a little handle on it. Uh, this thing's up to temperature, I believe, where we want it to be. Looks like a good old bucket forge to me. So let's go ahead, start the clock at 412. Throw that in there. <laughs> Boy, my score doesn't look centered, but it is what it is. How about how that feel on your headphones? Throw that lid in there, and we'll see how long it takes to heat up. 412. It's been one minute. She's starting to get warm. She ain't hot yet. Alrighty, two minutes. She's starting to turn a little bit of color. New coal anyway, you know, it's not exactly fair. Minutes in and she's getting there. I don't know if this lid is helping or hurting, quite honestly. You would think that it's helping. would think that it would be helping but I don't want to wait more than five minutes but again new fire cold steel who knows four minutes yeah we're doing pretty good not exactly even we'll just do a little rotation here there you go that's what I wanted it's also eighth inch stock. It's not. It's not thin stock. We got one more minute before she's gonna be. Oh darn! It's five minutes to see what we got here. And she's looking pretty dang good. Pretty darn good. We'll just let her sit there for a little bit longer. So again, what I did with the last pan, I'll go through the same process. Then I'll work on refining the process. Is I fluted the pan on the jig, came back, heated it up, fluted the. It just hammered on the flutes to help kind of upset a little bit and then came back and started working on the uh, upsetting of the flutes that were left so <clears throat> that's the plan we'll 
wait, no, the last pan that I did was, yeah, never mind, scratch all that. I'd already put the flutes in, so it would, as if I had been in the thing once. Then I went back and re -flute. Yeah, it's basically two times on the jig, and then over on the mandrel. That's the plan. And that looks like a nice hot pan to me. I think we can do something with that. So let me move you. All right, let's go ahead and turn this fan on. Still a little paint on that lid, so give this thing one last crank. Make sure it is hot in there. Not totally evened out, but evened out enough. Let's see, hammer. I gotta make sure I bring my hammer. So drop the jack. So we'll come in here and we'll get the belt lined up. We'll drop our jig on the line. I'm gonna fix my line because I think my lines are on. Then we'll center that up. leave you here. Put that pan in, flutes down, we'll throw the cover back on it. Flutes are already starting to get red again. Crank this thing up. It is 22, 422. It's 10 minutes lost. Two. Approaching about two minutes into the heat, and we're up to where I need to be, I think. What I want to do next, get everything ready, Chandler. Come back in, I'll make sure that I hammer all the spots I want to hammer. I can't do that. This is probably Get lined back up where I want it. Get the center and crank it down. Yeah, we're losing too much heat in this process, but that's it. Hope you are. Seems hokey, but we're in pretty good shape. We're still round. That's the key. All right. <clears throat> now we start working the flutes. The reason that I reworked my ring of fire concept is because now I want to heat just one flute at a time. 
So I can prop that up right in here. The rim holds it up, which is good for me. And I can rake some poles in there, which lets me get some heat going quickly. That's why the design is like that. I'm popping and cracking over there. And then we're going to, once that flute's warm, we're going to come back to this mandel right here. I didn't make a new one yet, but we'll use that one for now. So I grab here. That's definitely hot enough. So I can work here. And again, we're trying to upset. And that's it. That's all we do. Go to the next one. Right, opposite direction than I did last time. Get her heated up. It's uh, 428 we're at. Put a little coal over here to get cooking. 428. These flutes usually don't take too long to heat up. But you want them hot because you want to be able to, you want to get an upsetting heat. First time around, uh, 440 right now. And again, if you think about it, we didn't take it out of the heat till 10 after, so um, that's 30 minutes. Now what we do is go back to the go back to the uh, jig, flute it one more time, upset it one more time, and we should be where we want to be. So this goes in upside down. Inside the forge, with the lid to get a good full heat on it. That's a lot of hammer on the eighth inch. Five minutes to bring back up the heat all the way around. I forgot my idea of taking a shovel and scooping up the coals, so I had to do it the hard way, but here we go. Back to the It should center itself right up. We should be able to slide this thing on. Get where we want to be here. back down so we're happy just go around How 
big of a spot I have there without a fleet, but it is what it is. <coughs> Just enough room to find the right spot with this son of a bitch out here. So that's, uh oh. There we go, he went cranked up on it. Yeah. He is round. We're still there. So one more time on the flute gang. On the flute dance. Someone went in 448 is when I put it down. They're done. First one, 448 or 9 now. 457. I'm on my last uh, flute, or at least, I don't know if it's a, a, the last flute or where I started. So what I'm going to do now, it's done as far as the shaping goes. So I'm just going to go ahead and flatten up this outside to make, let's see, what do we got? 448, 458. Taking out some of the hammer marks. Some of the telltales that it was upset. Setting the angle for sure. Flattening the side. My left hand don't work anymore. Tuning, not fine tuning, yeah, fine tuning is I'll do it this way just to clean up the. I only hit on that seat. just trying to clean up that room not putting in very many hammer marks making sure my angles right and that's it I think that's what I want for this pan now I can tell you that this room is smaller than that room, but I told you I didn't think it was centered when I started. All right, let's go take a look at it for good. Which one did I just do? All right, that's the key. That's an important thing to me. Obviously, it's this one because this rim is, is up a little higher than this one. All right? But that's, I mean, hell, that ain't bad at all. They're pretty darn close. I might, I'm going to still tweak this one a little bit because it is a little bit out of whack here. I might... Yeah, it's too bad. I just wasn't centered right on that jig. But live and learn. Um, so I'll show you the one we just did. Not one hammer mark, right? On the inside of that pan. All right. Very, very, very cool. Uh, if it's not true, like this one, it's got a little wobble to it. 
Well, actually, I can't even say it's got a wobble because that wobble will be taken out when I when I finish uh, just truing everything up on the outside. But if not, I can heat that center up and just clamp it down in that clamp and give her a couple of wax and she'll true up. So I don't like, if you look carefully, can you see them in there or not? Right around the rim, right in here, you can see some spots where the, um, my little mandrel, there's some right there, D uh, dug in. Uh, so we gotta just dress that up a little bit more, but all right, enough of this freaking video. So make a tool, new tool, make a tool. Ring of fire wasn't what I was after. Right? I thought it was what I wanted. It wasn't what I was wanted. <laughs> I thought it was what I wanted. It wasn't what I wanted. So we turned it into just a big ass fire. And that worked. Alright? So we got uh, adult, you know, two heats. We got all the crimps in that we needed. And then we went around once, came back, one more crimp, and then all the way around once, and we're there. So I'm very, very pleased. It's now 503, so I mean over here um, I don't know what time to help I told you what time it was when I came over here so let's cut, say it was five o'clock um, I still got 12 minutes before the hours up now I was working my ass off I mean that's not something you're gonna be able to do all day long but you'll be um, more efficient too so uh, if we can go ahead and forge it in an hour uh, I bet you there's probably a, you know an hour of fine-tuning and putting the handle on it and all that so uh, at that point if this, what is this? This is an eight inch pan. If this eight inch pan with a handle looks as pretty as it does now, of course, I mean, it'll get clean, it'll get flattened, but that is, <coughs> I think, a darn quality looking pan, um, for sure. Um, I think $100 easily, $150 for that one, maybe maybe a little more. It's hard to tell, because it depends on what market that you're in. All right, I've, I've taken you guys enough on this journey. Um, I'm not going to be doing any make of tools for a while that I, that I think of. I don't think I need, I'm going to make any changes to the pan process right now until I do a few of these. And uh, if anything changes, of course, I will come back. Like I said, I promise, no more pan videos. Yeah. Thanks for coming along. A lot of hammering. Bye. If you found this video uh, helpful, educational, maybe even if you just found it entertaining, uh, and you want to support me you can jump back to my channel there's a button on the right hand side of the screen called support and it's kind of like a tip jar you can go ahead and leave channel a tip for this video and that'll help me make some more I guarantee thanks for your support as always